Hey everyone, Lethko here from RetroReviewRevolution.com and today we are finally checking out the Open Pandora handheld console. That's right, the review that I promised five years ago is finally here. That's taking me forever to get my hands on one of these. So let's check it out. This is the hardware portion of the review where we'll be going over software in a later video. But from you can tell from the pretty looking cube on the front, yes, this is the Open Pandora. At the front we have our two SD card slots, volume rocker, headphone jack, and power switch. Uh, my SD card slots currently house two 32 gig cards, however this can handle upwards of 128 gig cards. Uh, one th thing that you can really see right there in the video, it's a little off whenever you close it on this side over here. It don't really affect it that much, I think it's an issue with the molding though. This side over here, not much of anything. <laughs> this side over here, though, uh, your left and right triggers, uh, AC power, although it can also charge off the USB port on the other side, a full-size USB piece, and finally, uh, a special EXT connector, which uh, handles TV out in GPIO. And on this side, nothing but the stylus thing right there. Back of it, we'll check off the tag here. As we can see, this is a... First batch Pandora, which is pretty cool. And our battery goes in on this side, of course. And this thing takes a rather large battery. Boom! Battery! <laughs> I do plan picking up a, a second battery. This battery here, though, will give the Pandora about 10 hours of battery life. So a pretty darn impressive, if I do say so myself. So we will pop our battery cover on. The battery does ship in a cool uh, little hard case, too, which I really like. Uh, whenever you order a second one, it also comes with a hard case. It allows you to protect your battery if you swap it out. There we see a pretty green LED, so let's go ahead and pop the system on. When we inserted the battery, it begins booting with Super Zacks on. <laughs> but there we can zoom in there. That way you can get a good look at the screen and how long it takes the hardware to actually boot in. as it thinks about it. <laughs> it does take a little bit to boot. Uh, of course, it does run a full Linux system. You can see the LED flashing at the end there. There we go, now we have some bar movement. Just a little bit more. Also, from this uh, viewpoint, you can see the stereo speakers on it. This is loading applications, and normally it don't take this long to load applications. However, for the purposes of this review, I have loaded uh, over 500 applications for the Pandora, which causes that little glitch there where uh, some of the icons don't want to load at first. But this is Mini Menu, which is the uh, quick and easy way to go over Pandora apps. Although, if you want, you can load up a full Linux desktop. Well, we'll go over software in a later video. We will go ahead and uh, show off the other Linux desktop. We'll go to XFCE4, click OK. It'll begin booting a full Linux desktop. And it will take a few moments to get there. This is, as you saw on the, the sticker, an original first batch unit. Um, the newer models have um, updated specs. This particular model has a 600 megahertz processor. Uh, in this video, it has been overclocked to 800 megahertz, as well as 256 megs of RAM. An updated version called the Rebirth Edition has uh, added the RAM to 512 megabytes. Then another update called the 1 gigahertz version has, of course, a 1 gigahertz CPU in addition to the 512 megs of RAM. So let's go ahead and power off our Pandora, that way we can finish going over the hardware real quick. As soon as I find our switch there, we'll just hold it for a second. Uh, 
And it actually does not want to shut down from the desktop. How embarrassing. <laughs> That's not a problem though. We can uh, use our analog nubs or something else I haven't shown off in this video yet. Yes, there's a stylus for a reason. The Pandora has a touch screen interface. You can use hardware keys or you can use a touch screen. So we'll switch our GUI back over to mini menu. And then from here, we will shut down our Pandora. That way we can finish this little review by going over the rest of the hardware. Banana. There we go. And now we see the biggest part of the Pandora. Not only do you get dual analog, a nice D-pad, and your four main buttons in addition to your two shoulder buttons. You also get a full keyboard. This makes the system great for emulating Commodore 64, Amiga, Sinclair Spectrum, and DOS era games. Really a huge, huge feature that uh, I wish I'd see other handhelds pull off. But uh, the keyboard is definitely what makes this device, and even though the specs may seem a little low here in 2013, uh, for what the machine emulates, you really don't need more memory or a uh, faster CPU unless you're wanting to emulate uh, newer systems or uh, higher end DOS games. Uh, the N64 emulator is not 100%, but it does play some games well, such as Mario 64, obviously. Uh, there's even emulators for the Nintendo DS and the PlayStation Portable, the original, not the new Vita. So uh, this little handheld is very, very cool. Uh, currently, the original edition, if you go to, uh, I believe, the dragonbox.de shop, it's running for about $350, whereas the uh, newer versions are obviously more. Uh, the 1 gigahertz is actually approaching that $600 mark. But, you have to consider, you're not really buying a handheld gaming console, you're buying a full, pocketable Linux PC. And the size of this, as you can tell from, you know, my hand being the shot, pretty small. I mean, it's about, uh, slightly bigger than the 3DS, just very slightly bigger. Great little handheld that we will be going over in more detail in part two of the review, where we'll be going over the software aspect, which uh, most of that's going to be going over uh, mini menu and the full length desktop before we start going into applications and emulators. Uh, as far as applications, there's audio editors, video downloaders, web browsers, I mean, all kinds of stuff is available for this thing. Uh, the official repository, which uh, you can actually access if you want to look at the software, at repo.openpandora.org, has, as of this video, close to 830 different applications, games, and emulators that you can check out. So I highly re recommend going over there to seeing what's available. Uh, overall, though, I'd have to recommend at least... The classic version of this handheld, which will uh, get you the 600 megahertz CPU, 256 megs of RAM, and plenty of games. I mean, this thing will have a crap ton of games. And uh, for the price of slightly over 300, it's a pretty good deal considering the fact that you're getting a full Linux computer with it. Uh, in addition to the other specs, it does have built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, very, very good audio capabilities. Um, the audio chips in this thing blow away audio chips and normal handhelds that you see today, such as the PS Vita and the 3DS. I mean, it just spanks the audio. <laughs> so that's something to check out if you're a huge audiophile. So stay tuned for part two while well, we will be uh, going over the software, uh, starting with the operating system, and then we'll be checking out some games and maybe some emulators and some applications.